Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. I'm here to help you find the answers to the most frequently asked questions from my clients about self-directed retirement accounts. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Self-directed IRA versus capital gains. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And on today's ad mail, going to discuss three questions that tackle the topic of investing using an IRA versus using personal money, tax deferral versus capital gains. What's better? What's the difference? What happens? So these three questions are going to bring out, I think, important issues that are directly and indirectly involved in the discussion of whether one should use IRA or personal funds when making an investment. So before I get into the questions, let me just briefly discuss the difference between tax deferral, using an IRA or a Roth IRA, and then using personal money to do an investment. So firstly, with the retirement side, if you use an IRA to make an investment, an IRA, a Roth IRA, a 401k, all the money generally in the investment will flow back the returns, of course, the income, the interest, dividends, royalties, rental income, the gains, tax-free back into the IRA. So for example, if the IRA buys a stock for $100 and sells it for $200, the $200, including the $100 of gain, would flow back into the IRA without tax. That's known as deferral, compounding returns, eighth wonder of the world. One of the prime reasons why people use and invest retirement accounts as the primary source of savings, because you can get a tax deduction if you do a pre-tax IRA contribution, but you also can take advantage of the power of deferral. Now, the Roth IRA obviously comes in and adds a layer of tax optimization because when you sell, when you take the money out of the IRA as a distribution, so long as you're 59 and a half, the Roth has been open at least five years, it's all tax free. Whereas if you use the pre tax IRA or pre tax 401k, you'd have to pay ordinary income tax on the distribution. But for purposes of this podcast within the IRA, it's still deferred, it's tax free. Now, there is a situation where an IRA that makes an investment could trigger a tax known as UBIT, unrelated business income tax, and implies in only three specific situations. Use an IRA to use as margin to buy an asset like stock. Use it an IRA to, with a non-recourse loan to buy real estate. And thirdly, if your IRS, IRA excuse me, invests in an active trader business like a restaurant through an LLC or other pass-through, if any of those three instances generate, <clears throat> excuse me, more than a thousand dollars of net income allocated to the retirement account, a UBTI tax that can go as high as thirty-seven percent at a very low income threshold of approximately fifteen thousand dollars could get triggered. But it only gets triggered in those three instances. So if you're generating rental income, interest, dividends, royalties, um, and capital gain type investments, and it does the investments does not fit in one of those three categories you're not going to trigger UBIT and all the income would be deferred. Now, the flip side, if you use personal non-retirement money to make investment and you sold stock for a gain, if you held this stock less than 12 months, it's called short-term capital gains and you would pay ordinary income tax. If you held a stock or the property more than 12 months, you'd pay long-term capital gains, which has a tax rate of 15%. Or if you're a high income earner above 650K or so, you're looking at 20% plus a 3.8% Obamacare tax or about 23.8%. That's for a capital gains, selling an asset, real estate, um, stock, and the like. Dividends from non-publicly traded companies are taxed at ordinary income. Dividends from publicly traded companies are taxed at a 15% reduced rate. Uh, interest would be taxed as ordinary income. So now let's jump into these questions. Now that you understand the difference between deferral capital gains and ordinary income. And I think these questions uh, will bring out the clarification of when using an IRA makes more sense than using personal money for making an investment and, and vice versa. So the first question is from Rob S. Rob wants to know, if I invest in commercial real estate deal 
would I be better to use my IRA or personal fund? So this is a really good question. You could probably spend an hour on this particular topic, but in a nutshell, here it is. If you use retirement money, you're going to get to take advantage of the deferral, okay? Meaning the rental income, potentially the sale, will go back to the IRA without tax. If you use personal money, you get depreciation which would offer you deduction to reduce your taxable income. Depreciation doesn't help an IRA because IRAs don't pay tax. So deductions don't help IRAs. Deductions help you and me individually. So depreciation is a very, very big win for real estate investors that use personal funds. Also, remember that UBIT, that ugly four-letter word I mentioned? Most real estate deals are going to use leverage, if not all. So if you're doing a commercial real estate deal, you're probably going to have leverage, and that could trigger a UBIT on the debt finance portion. So if 80% of the deal is leveraged up, then 80% of your net income above a thousand bucks could be triggered, could trigger UBIT, which would go as high as 37%. So in this particular case, Rob, I may tell you, hey, if you had a choice, you may want to use personal funds. Now, if you use IRA funds, what I would suggest is probably a blocker where you'd use a C-Corp blocker to reduce the UBIT from 37 to 21%. Um, or maybe some some other potential uh, tax solutions, but the C corp blocker is the most popular solution for blocking UBIT. But otherwise, if if you had the personal money and you were diversified and had the cash flow to do it, as a lawyer or tax lawyer, I would probably say, hey Rob, probably better off using personal money. You'll get the depreciation. You'll hopefully get capital gains. Yes, you'll get depreciation recapture, but it's a twenty eight percent. It's not a thirty seven percent. This deal may be better off in a non-retirement account. Now, you may say, hey, I, I don't have enough money personally. I want to do this deal. There's huge upside. I'll do the blocker. 21% is not horrible. That's fine. But you, what we do at IRA Financial, what my job is, is to issue spot, to let clients know, hey, these are the issues. And this is where you can optimize. This is where you may want to pivot. Thank God IRA Financial is very successful. We're a volume business, okay? We have 25,000 clients. If one person doesn't do it, you know, our life's not going to change. We want to satisfy and serve everyone properly and professionally, but we want to give everyone the right advice. So I would certainly tell someone, don't do it versus doing an investment. And in five years, you come back and say, hey, this was a good deal, but I really should use personal money because now I have to pay the IRS this UBIT tax. And that's not very uh, you know, palatable at this point. We do file a 990T, which is a UBIT return. but um, we're great at issue spotting, at structuring, at tax optimization. And I probably have turned away thousands and thousands of clients over the years, mostly on these real estate deals, where I'm just like, it doesn't make sense. Don't do it. Use personal money. And that's just an important thing that uh, the IRA financial team, we are focused on serving you and giving you the right uh, type of service and advice. Second question from Tony R. Tony wants to know, I want to lend a real estate developer I know $250,000 for 12 months. Should I use my IRA or personal money? So I'm like, Rob, in this case, Tony, using an IRA is a way, way more tax efficient solution. Why? Because interest is subject to ordinary income tax, which is higher than long-term capital gains tax rate of 15%. So if you can shift your interest from ordinary income to deferral in an IRA or potentially tax rate in a Roth, that's a huge, huge, huge tax play, huge tax savings. And in that case, I, Tony, I would say do it all day long, seven days a week. You want to do hard money loans using a retirement account and not personal funds. It's very ineffective from a tax standpoint to do hard money loans using personal funds, especially credit funds. I never understood why people do this. You have an IRA or a 401k or a Roth sitting there. Use the retirement account for interest type deals because of the ordinary income nature of the interest. Whereas real estate, you'll get the advantage of depreciation and you potentially have the advantage of capital gains versus UBIT if there's leverage being used. So in this case, Tony, I would strongly suggest if you can, obviously I'm not giving you advice to whether this is a good investment. That's something you and your um, team and your this real estate developer as a borrower will have to determine. But from a pure Tax standpoint, it makes sense. Third and final question of today's podcast from Alex V. And Alex wants to know, I'm a pretty active crypto trader. Am I missing something? But why would I not use a self-directed IRA to trade cryptos? Uh, you would. 
<laughs> you would anything active. So if you're trading stocks actively, trading cryptos, anything you're holding or flipping real estate, anything you're holding an asset less than 12 months, you do not want to use personal money. You want to use a retirement account. Why? As I mentioned at the outset of the podcast, short-term capital gains gets triggered when you hold a piece of property, an asset like stock or real estate or cryptos less than 12 months. Short-term capital gains rate is ordinary income tax rate, which can go as high as 37%. So if you can shift that to zero or you defer it, where you're, let's say, buying and selling you know, Tesla or uh, NVIDIA or cryptos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever, 100 times a day, 1,000 times a week, doesn't matter. There's no tax. There's no short-term capital gains. There's no long-term capital gains. There's no dividends. There's no interest. There's no tax. Zero. Zip. Assuming there's no leverage being used, no tax. Right, you don't have to worry about holding periods. You don't have to worry about basis. You don't have to worry about sale price. It's all tax free. Now you don't get the losses if you do have a bad trade because IRAs don't take advantage of losses because they're not taxpayers. The flip side, the advantage is they don't pay tax. Right, a lot of people are like Adam using an IRA. I don't get my losses. I'm like you're right, and in real estate, that's a fair, fair point, especially because you get potentially depreciation. Um, which is an advantage for being a real estate developer, a real estate investor. But you also don't pay tax in an IRA. So I'd rather not pay tax and get deductions personally, but that's just my call as a tax lawyer. But I get it. In certain cases, like I discussed with Rob on, on this podcast with, um, or Rob's question about commercial real estate, I, I get it. I think using personal money may work. In this case, Alex, I think using an IRA, a Roth IRA to crypto trade, um, obviously that's risky in itself. So I'm not suggesting that folks out there go crypto trading, but if you are then using an IRA makes a lot of tax sense. Now the downside, you don't get the losses. Another downside is you're generally not going to be able to use the money to your 59 and a half, because if you pull the money out prematurely, you're going to pay tax and a 10% penalty. So you want to be at least 59 and a half to escape the 10% early distribution tax. And especially if you have a Roth, you want to be 59 and a half and hold the Roth IRA at least five years to lock in your tax-free um, distributions. But otherwise, yes, active crypto trading where you're going to hold the asset less than 12 months makes far more tax sense doing it in a retirement account than using personal funds. So that's it. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Rob. Really good episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. This is a, um, a very important topic. Um, should probably keep doing this more and more. It's basic and I get it. We don't learn it in school, whether it's high school, college, even law school. There is a strong, strong lack of knowledge between how a retirement works in terms of deferral, compounding returns, which Albert Einstein coined the eighth wonder of the world, versus using personal money. And it's an important dynamic. It's an important relationship that needs to be better understood because using the wrong source of income could end up taking 30 37% of your money and your gains and literally put it in the government's pocket just by using the wrong bucket of funds, right? Something simple. Sometimes you don't have a choice, right? Sometimes you're just rich in the IRA and, and not as rich with personal money and you want to do the deal and you have no choice. But if there is a choice, then whether it's real estate, a credit fund, a hard money loan, crypto trading, stock trading, like there is generally a more tax optimized answer. And I think that's where we can help. So if you have questions, you're a client or not client, we have an amazing team that's spent a lot of time and money on training. So call us. You can reach out to us. Even if you're not a client, we'll, we'll get you the answer um, because you know, you're know you number one. We want to educate people and provide you the necessary expertise so you can become a better, smarter, more savvy, and obviously more successful retirement investor. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, it's fun good topic. Uh, it's a lot of fun. This is an important podcast. So definitely check out ad mail, which drops every week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a, um, a review or a comment. If you enjoyed it, that would always be much appreciated. Otherwise have a great day and see everyone next week. Yeah.